fantastic. Now, uh, most of the people we are spoken to, because as at the time you we became president, I was already ten years old, but I had the talent of, you know, I was I had interest in politics. My news on point, your pulse on trending news. Please subscribe to our channel. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, and all that. So, I know a lot of reforms that uh, you brought into the system. Like the first one, most of the draconian things that preceded you, you knocked them off. I know that on the first day of your coming in, there were a lot of pronouncements. States were created, uh, people were released, journalists that have been detained were released. People don't talk about that. So you were basically seen as a man on a mission. That was when you came in. Now. Can you tell us what was actually your actual vision for Nigeria before you became president? Because I believe you didn't just sit down to say, I want to be president. You must have had a trajectory that you were wonderful. Yeah, I think we we had, I had. I was very much in contact with the general feelings within the society. I have friends that come across or cut across the entire spectrum of the society. Um, I was interested in generally governance, generally. So I'm always in contact with uh, people who are affected by governance and by governance. And uh, that made me become very much aware of politics around me or things around me. And that was the beginning. So I can be able to know that this is good, this is... And a lot of us were fairly worried about how countries, the relationship between the military and the civilians were the coups, because that was the in thing then at that time in the African continent. Okay, now let's talk about, uh, this is not controversial per se, because uh, if you, out of uh, 10 marks, if you're able to get 7 and 8, it's excellent, you have passed. But perhaps, uh, one of the points that could have probably made it 100 for you, the structural adjustment program. Because in the course of uh, reading uh, Chidi Amuta's book, I also posed this question to Dr. Kali Dikakali. I felt that SAP was a very good, uh, was a was a very good program on paper and all that. So I, I asked Dr. Kalu Dikakali that you were first in charge of the, the economy, then I know you were you went into planning at some point. So did you people really follow this through? Because if you did follow follow the program through as you had it there. Perhaps uh, it could have been absolutely, things could have been perfect. What happened? So I'm posing that question to you. I think I said it at the beginning of launching it, when we first launched it. We told the country that this program is not going to be an easy program. It is going to be tough. But we appreciated the resilience of the Nigerian people. And we counsel that if they work hard, the program will be very, very beneficial to each and everybody in the country. But if we decide to break down or to succumb to the pressures of the reform, then we are not going anywhere. I was honest enough to say it because I realized that it is not going to be easy. And behold, we were, I was quite right because there was, in this country, maybe, but then you have grown up. It was, there was sub riot in this country. It was the first time I realized that I have overrated the resilience of the Nigerians under pressure 
that was the first time but we kept it on going keep on talking to people that look this is good for the country and is good for you and i'm glad that people realize it later after going through some of this people who stood firm to do what we were trying to do let's say in privatization for example uh, they are now today some of our successful captains of industries in this country this is because of all the saps um we also realize that uh, control plays a lot of havoc to the country so we liberalize quite a number of things that were inherently under government control government has to sweep your backyard for example to praise it that it is a good government or something like that uh, so we is good we saw it we realized there will be difficulty and there was difficulty we also realized that the, the nigerian people are very resilient and those of them who really stuck to it today is uh, we are better off absolutely because i remember the economy opened up mm -hmm. so many things right this, i know that some of the challenges then was all this borrowing people didn't know that it's part of an economic policy it, absolutely mm -hmm. okay now i know i know from some of your reforms there's a man we are going to interview in kano uh, on monday his name is dan maria the man said he benefited from your some of your economy uh, mm -hmm. he is a billionaire he is very very much grateful to you you will see him in the documentary okay today is a farmer he has a very large farm he talked about how your government and not only him a lot of other people around so let's go to june 12. i know you've said something on our rights in fact it is an area where most people nobody wants to touch but chidi amuta did a very good job about it because nigerians need to have closure on the matter so he did a very good job let me let you in on what uh, chidi amuta said some of the things he said he gave insights into the several what ifs. Mm -hmm. What could have happened? Where well, people are talking about an amendment of June 12. What could have happened in June 12 had it not been annulled? So, but many people are so selfish to reason that way. So, but because this is a documentary, unlike what arises, mm -hmm. which is a program, it's passive, it has gone. This is a documentary that will stay. So, uh, let's attempt to give closure to Nigerians what could have happened that day because everybody knows that abiola was your friend in fact people according to chidi amota you wanted abiola to become president in fact you were happy you were so comfortable because you knew abiola was going to defeat tofa admission what do you have to say about about all that sir? well i think it's um, like you rightly said a lot have been said about june 12 and um people perceive it on different platform but i think i kept on saying is good that june 12 happened um when we put up what you in the media call that contraption called interim government we all realized the problem and we decided to provide something to assuage the strong feelings of nigerians about the election but the call then was nigerians are weary of elections so the worst military dictatorship is better than this contraption called um, interim government what we wanted to do then was to give nigeria another chance within a short period of six months an opportunity to go for another election 
so that a true winner of that election could be pardoned. But we got harassed by everybody, those who know, those who don't know, enlightened and not so enlightened. Um, everybody has something to say on that thing based on his own perception. And I thought that would not have been good for a country like Nigeria. That is one. Secondly, I knew the feelings within the military establishment. And we wanted to hand over then a country or an armed forces that is not coup prone. We wanted to establish an excellent civil military relation where a democratically elected government gives, takes care of the country and subordinate the armed forces under the constituted authority elected by government. Just like it was during the First Republic. All these are what is working on our minds when we had that annual June 12. So I knew the feeling of the military at that time. And nobody can convince me then that another who was eminent at that time. I had the information, I have the documents, I confronted some of the all. And I thought it's not fair again to plunge the country into another thing. We succeeded in carrying out a coup which was bloodless and then we carry out a one, another one which I think is going to be bloody and tribalistic. So that is, we are showing the discord of a very fragile Nigeria, a Nigeria that was not the one, the dream of our founding fathers. And uh, we had no alternative but to resist the pressure. Do it this way. Oh no, it's because of this. I had all sorts of things about this, but we were determined. We knew the country should be first. It's just the purpose is to save the country. And I'm glad we still have a country. Now, um, with the benefit of hands. Thanks for watching. Kindly subscribe to our channel. God bless you.